So we are going to have a look at this last example um, where we're going to do a show that question and wants us to find out what this is equal to and it says that a and b are integers to be found. So we need to make sure that we can get it in that form that we've got there. What do you think we need to do for the, the left hand side of this, of this equation to begin with? Yeah, we're going to have to expand it. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to have to do on the left-hand side here. So I'm going to take the sum from r equals 1 to n of r brackets r plus 3 2r minus 1, and we're going to expand it and see what we get. So can we just expand this bit, and we'll ignore the r to begin with. So what would this bit expand to? 2r squared. 2R squared. Good, it's going to be plus 5r, so it's going to be 2r squared, but we're going to actually make it r cubed because of the extra r. So it's 2r cubed. We said it was plus 5r, so it's going to be plus 5r squared, and it's going to be minus 3r like this. And this time I need to bracket it just to show I'm talking about the whole thing that we've got there. Now, if you want to, we could break it down into the summations where we could do... 2 sigma r equals 1 n r cubed plus 5 sigma r equals 1 n of r squared minus 3 r equals 1 n of r. You could do that if you want to write that line. If you don't want to write that line and you're confident enough with what the formulae are, then that's fine. I don't need to see, I don't need to see this line, but I've done it now, so you don't have to copy it if you don't want to. Now let's see if we can remember what these formulae were. So I'm going to ask Marco for this one. Theo for this one, and Andrew for this one. OK, so Marco, what's this going to be here for the 2 r cubed? Uh, for 2 uh, in brackets. Yep. Uh, 1 quarter. Good. Squared. And then another bracket. And the n plus 1. And then the whole bracket as well. Good. Like this. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. yeah. I just didn't know, because you were talking about which bits were being squared and things like that. but. Um, no, 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 not at all. It's not wrong at all. Um, I probably would have written it like that, but I might not have put the bracket. I actually might have just gone straight in and said two quarters at the beginning, because I know that two times a quarter is two quarters. And on the next line, I can simplify that to a half. Just depends how much your brain can do without it um, doing like what you were just saying your calculators do, where you put a number too big. Um, so Theo, you're going to do this next bit for me. Um, OK, so uh, plus five over six. Yep. Good. So it's the same standard formula, which is a sixth n, n plus 1, 2, n plus 1, but we've multiplied it by 5. And then the last bit, please, Andrew. Um, so you will um, do um, three halves. Three halves. Brackets. Yep. Well, well, n, Don't need brackets. Yeah, n. Yep. Brackets, n plus 1. Good. Perfect. So we've got to this stage that we've got here. And we're now going to try and do the various bits of factorizing that needs to happen. Now, there's a few different ways that you can think about this. Because actually, earlier on, when you were doing a previous question, Theo, you pulled out like a half. Marco pulled out a third. And I'm just going to, I'm probably going to go more towards Marco's method, just because it's what we're aiming for. Good. So this, this gives us the clue of what we're going to try and take out. If I take out a sixth n, n plus 1, the number we never need to worry about because we can always make the number work. But they do all have an n and an n plus 1. If they didn't all have an n and an n plus 1, you know that something is wrong with your working out here because it's not going to ever give you the thing that's at the top. Now, if you are taking out a sixth, what are you actually doing to each of the individual pieces? You're multiplying by 6 because taking out a factor of a sixth is dividing everything, dividing everything by a sixth. And dividing by a sixth is the same as multiplying everything by six. So when you pull out a number from a, when you're factorizing, you're normally dividing by that number. So I'm going to divide all of these bits when I pull them out. I'm going to multiply them all by six when I pull out this a sixth n, n plus one. I'll do some big brackets. I'm just going to replace that um, two over four with a half. It might just be a little bit easier to see what's going on now. So I'm going to be. First of all, I'll deal with the number. I've pulled out a sixth, so I'm multiplying by six. Six multiplied by a half is three. 
Now, I've pulled out an n and an n plus 1. What would I be left with? An n and an n plus 1. Now, for this bit, I'm pulling out a 6, so I'm multiplying it by 6, so I get 5. So I'll have the 5, but I don't, I've already pulled out the n and I've pulled out the n plus 1, so there's just going to be a 2n plus 1 like this. And what's my number going to be here? 9. So I've got 3 over 2 multiplied by 6, which is 9. Nothing else. Now you can see why I taught you those factorizing skills, because imagine trying to expand all of that. It would just be kind of a nightmare, really. It'd be very fun. <laughs> so we've got a 6th n, n plus 1. And I'm just going to go to regular size brackets here. So I have 3n squared plus 3n plus 10n plus 5 minus 9. So I have a 6th n, n plus 1, 3n squared plus 13n minus 4. And if you wanted to, you could state that a is 13 and b is negative 4. And now you can see that it can't be factorized, which is why it was presented to us in the 3n squared plus a n plus b form, rather than as these two double brackets that we've got there. OK, then it says, hence calculate this particular thing that we've got here, from r equals 11 to r equals 40. So that is going to be breaking it down into these two pieces. What are the, the top and bottom numbers going to be? Oh, and R equals 1, 40. Yep. And, and R equals 1, and 10. Good. And then it's just going to literally be a, a case of substituting in 40, and then substituting in 10, and subtracting them. So it's going to be a 6 multiplied by 40, multiplied by 41, multiplied by, let's pick up my calculator. So it's 3 times 40 squared plus 13 times 40 minus 4. That's 5, 3, 1, 6. And then I'm going to have a 6 multiplied by 10, multiplied by 11, multiplied by 426. What number did you get? I got 1,446. So you got 1 million. 445. Four, 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 five. You got 1,445,230. Yeah, Andrew. And where did you get 5,316? I substituted oh, n, okay. n equals 40 into that, okay. and that gives you 5,316. I just was being okay. lazy. And in further maths, you. I don't want to start promoting that you can be lazy, but there are certain things you don't always have to do, like you want to show, now I'm substituting in. Like, they're more interested in the stuff that's not in normal maths, okay? So you can, if, you, if you're feeling good with your calculator skills, you can, you can still show this substitution, but you don't have to do it like line, 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 loads and loads of lines of that all happening, okay? So we're going to do some questions from exercise 3B, and then we will do... Um, a couple of last bits that have got some kind of weird questions, and um, we'll just go from there, okay?